Hey YouTube, it's Jamie, smoking in my car. It's real smoky in here. I normally have the air going, but I don't need it right now. Maybe I'll do a little window. Uh, so... One thing I was thinking about talking about, oh, let me do this first. This is my LaRocca basket pipe. Just got this the other day. Inexpensive basket pipe. It's a fine smoker. I really like it. And, uh, and, uh, in it, I'm smoking, um, Proper English, which is that Stokeby? I think it's Stokeby's proper English. Peter Stokeby. It's just a standard English mixture. Bulk English mixture. I'm right by the airport. You hear that plane? One thing I wanted to talk about, I don't know, this just popped into my head over the weekend. And I was thinking I would, I should do a video on it. Uh, it comes up in conversation once in a while. Uh, especially with some of my older friends who we were uh, punk rockers when we were younger. And even sort of now, right? But at 50-something, it's... Uh, not quite as comfortable a fit as it is when you're, you know, teens or 20s. Anyway, something that comes up and has gotten me in trouble at various times in conversation is when uh, we talk about the history and origin of punk music. Because I believe that almost nobody knows what it is. I believe almost nobody knows the truth. I believe I know the truth. And when I put that forward, I almost always get an argument. But I believe it's the truth. Now here's, here's the beginning origin of punk music irrefutably, I think. Argue with me at your own peril about this because I gotta tell you, this is pretty sourced and pretty backed up. You're not going to like it, probably. You're going to be like, no, that doesn't sound right. You're going to be like, you know, particularly if you're a punk rocker because you've already got your own ideas about this. But I got to tell you, you might be wrong when you hear what I have to say about this. I'm not trying to be arrogant about it. I'm just saying, I've looked into this. I've been... A, interested in the music for decades and decades. Um, B, I've read all the liner notes. I've worked in a record store. I've played in punk bands. I've known a bazillion punk rockers. I've talked about this a bazillion times. Um, I think I know the truth. I'm going to tell you. Not the Sex Pistols. Not the Ramones. Not New York, not London, not L.A., not Detroit, not the Stooges, not the MC5. So, the term punk rock, here's where I start my argument. When we call something by a name, it, that name means something. And if words mean thing, words mean things... If words mean things, then we have to just go at their value, right? So, the term punk rock was coined between 1970 and 1972. It was coined by at least four people. Greg Shaw from Who Put the Bomp and Crawdaddy Magazine. Robert Criscow from The Village Voice. 
Lenny K from the Lung Nuggets liner notes. Lenny K, he was Patti Smith's guitar player, and he wrote the Nuggets liner notes, which was a collection of, a compilation of 60s bands. And um, Lester Bangs from Cream Magazine. These people between 1970 and 1972 used the term punk rock. Punk rock. So unmistakably they are talking about punk rock. And this is where that term was coined. What, that ter what they were referring to invariably every single time all four of those guys and anybody else who used the term punk rock between 70 and 72, that is to say when the term was coined, that's where it comes from and when it comes from, every single time they used that term, they were re referring about one thing. That one thing is teenaged American small combos, amateurish, and influenced by the British invasion. So, those are the criteria that make something punk rock. Mid-60s, so 65, 66, 67 is pushing it, but up until maybe before the summer of love, so not that summer, right? But mid-65, all of 66, half of 67. During that time, you had bands like Question Mark and the Mysterians, the Count Five, the Amboy Dukes, um, the Seeds, um, the the I mean a ton of other bands, literally hundreds and hundreds of them, lesser known than those. The Standells, actually, the Standells are a little dicey because they go a little earlier than that. Mid '60s American garage bands who were amateurish and were influenced by the British invasion. That's the definition of punk music. Punk rock means mid-60s American garage amateur small bands influenced by um, the British invasion. Anything else that calls itself punk is beholden to that standard. I know we call the Stooges punk. You could technically call the Stooges post-punk because they came after that. The Stooges came, the, the Stooges were formed in 68, I think. After punk rock had come and gone. If you want to know more about actual legitimate punk punk rock the best stuff there is look at compilations called um pebbles pebbles compilations it's a series of compilations on uh bomb or vox records um look up the nuggets compilation has a lot of punk on it um that came out uh, you can get a rhino edition of it now the nuggets compilation original 60s artifacts whatever um my favorite ones are the back from the grave compilations if you look up back from the grave 60s punk uh compilations so so now we call that 60s punk from this perspective we call it 60s punk just so people don't get confused because people do get confused and they have been confused for years when you say punk People think you're talking about the Sex Pistols or the Ramones. And you have to qualify and say 60s punk now. If you say 60s punk, that's actual punk music. That's original punk music. I'll argue that forever. And I could, I will back that up with like solid facts that say punk rock is this. Everything else, we call it punk, but we just call it that loosely. It's not actually punk music. It's something else. It's like rock or punk influenced rock. It sounds, uh, I know what you're thinking. That sounds wrong to me, Jamie. I gotta tell you, I've had this argument many, many times. I don't know. Look into it. Back from the grave, Crypt Records. <laughs> 